Hey guys, how you doing? Okay, so today we're gonna cover some mid-game tips and tricks. When I say mid-game, what do I mean? I mean you finish the main story. And now, what you're trying to do is prepare for the very first capstone dungeon. And so you'll see right there. Priority quest level 50, world tier 3 nightmare, okay? Now, let me show you something real quick. You can change your difficulty here, right? If I go back to tier 1, it's gone. You won't you won't see the capstone dungeon on tier 1, okay? So when you finish the main campaign, you should in my opinion, it makes a lot more sense to play the game on world tier 1 until you finish the main campaign and your level is somewhere in the 40s, okay? And you can come to this statue or you can you can you can raise the world tier difficulty level at the character selection screen. So you come here and you see so monsters are more challenging, but you get 20% more XP and 15% more gold. That's not worth it in the in the initial leveling up phase when you're trying to finish the main campaign. Okay? So once you finish the main campaign, turn it up to world tier two. There's the capstone dungeon. That's what you're preparing for. That's your goal. And now what you want to do is you want to, everything you do from this point on is to prepare for that capstone dungeon to move you to world tier three. Okay? One of the best ways to do that, in my opinion, is the tree of whispers. Okay? You will unlock this as you, as you play through the campaign. There's the waypoint. Okay? The Tree of Whispers will tell you about the Capstone Dungeon, and it'll put it on your map if you're if you're in World Tier Two. If you're not, it'll tell you about it, but you won't be able to see it. Okay. Now, what I think you should be doing in order to prepare for the Capstone Dungeon, which you'll notice I haven't done yet, is Tree of Whispers. The most efficient way to work on your Tree of Whispers is to run the red mark dungeons that give you five grim favors that's definitely the most efficient way you'll get more xp you'll get more more loot it is your best option i personally can't stand it okay i can't stand to just grind dungeons it it wears me out it grinds on me i do everything if you complete a whole zone you should get 10 grim favors okay i think that's more fun i like the surface stuff I like the dungeons. I just can't do dungeons exclusively. It drives me crazy. The next thing you want to be doing is check your map frequently for events. Okay? You're looking for world events. You're looking for, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, world boss, world boss monsters. Okay? You're looking for legion events, right? You won't get Helltides until Tier 3, so we'll cover that in a different video. This is, let's call this early mid-game. Now, another objective of yours, and something I think you should be focusing on, is your, your, um, your renowned zone unlocks. Now, yes, it shows on this particular character, I'm still working on these. That's not really true, okay? I finished these on my Barbarian. You can still unlock these, but you don't get the skill point, okay? So, for your first character, your first time through the game, in World Tier 2, you want to get these three unlocked for every single zone on your first character. Second characters, it's less of a... less of a... Um, of a priority. Okay, work on your renown, get that going before you move into World Tier 3, because in World Tier 3, you want to start working on this, and definitely you want to start working on that. Okay, that is five levels of prestige points. It's very important. That's 20, 20 par oh, excuse me, paragon points. Okay, when we're talking 20 paragon points, you can come down here and look at my board. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's how far it'll get you. Because I grab these two nodes, and then it'll get you to your first glyph. Very, very important, okay? You also need to have some kind of plan for your Paragon points. And you want to be very careful about how you spend them, okay? You don't have an unlimited number of Paragon points. And let me tell you something. The leveling really slows down in the mid-70s. It becomes so grindy. That's why I'm on another tune. <laughs> um, my my barb is 74. And my, uh, my flurry rogue here is 52. Okay. Now, the next thing you really need to get to get a handle on now you've been leveling up you've just been you, sh you should just be throwing on the best gear you get don't get too terribly caught in the weeds and the details don't worry about having the exact best in slot perfect piece of boots or whatever you're you're gonna level so fast you're gonna outgrow them but now now that you're getting ready to go to tier three you want to pay more 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 attention to your loot you want to get picky Okay, and so you want to look for things. You want to look for synergies. Okay, make sure you don't have the same legendary affix on gear. You'll see how this, where it says imprinted, you gain 0.25% increased armor. Make sure that's not grayed out. If it's grayed out, you have two pieces with the same affix. That's a problem you want to fix. Okay, and in order to fix that, you need to waddle over here to the occultist and you really want to understand what the occultist can do for you and how to use the occultist you can't go hog wire hog wild with this stuff it costs money and it costs let me see here no 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 no, no. okay so one important thing you can do is you can replace an affix on your gear Okay, you see this one has a locked in because I've, I've already re-rolled this. So if you look here, see the see the blue circle next to critical strike chance. I re-rolled that. You got to be careful because this cost costs you fiend roses, which you only get from hell tides. It's a major problem with the current system. It shouldn't be that way. I don't know why they did it that way, but essentially only only players in tier three and tier four can re-roll affixes on armor. It's incredibly stupid. It's a really dumb move on their part. But it also costs veiled crystals. You primarily get veiled crystals from breaking down rares, yellow gear. You're gonna burn through these things like crazy. And you'll notice it's 192,000 gold. Look, I've been re-rolling a lot of stuff on my, my, my rogue. It gets really expensive. You gotta watch it. You know, reroll once is relatively cheap, but the second time, let me show you. Uh, no, no, <laughs> there we go. So you see, it's it's much much cheaper. Okay, ninety three thousand versus, I mean, it's it's double, right? So reroll once, but think long and hard before you reroll, because you know, in D Diablo three, we would reroll dozens of times. You're not doing that here. It's too darn expensive. The other thing you need to, to be doing is extracting useful affixes. Uh, um, excuse me, aspects. And you want to start saving these aspects. And notice some are blue. Okay? And then some are white. Do, 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 do. Well, no, no, these are all whites. These are all normals. Uh, the next tier up, the, the symbol is blue. Those are better. But uh, you only you get those in tier three, so right now you just got whites. So you're gonna have to learn what are the more important uh, aspects for your build. This flurry damage aspect is one of the most important things for my build. Very very important, and that's pretty good. Um, that's fine to give me an immune. Um, now. I'm focusing on primary skill damage. I'm trying to see if I if it's effective to really sex up invigorating strike. We'll see.
I'm, I'm not entirely sure yet, but I'm, I'm trying. So I understand you're a cultist, okay? Once you're done messing around with your aspects, then come over here and upgrade your gear, okay? You do it at the blacksmith. This is important. It improves every single thing. See, if I, if, if I take this necklace and go to upgrade... Why can't I upgrade the necklace? That's weird. Can't use that. Oh, the jeweler. Dumb. Dumb me. I'm a dummy. Okay, so we put this in here. And you can see... See how it improves everything? Okay. Not a huge jump up. Which is why I don't do the fourth one most times. Because it gets expensive and it's really putting a hurting on my, on my veiled crystals. But... If we... Jog on over to the jeweler... And upgrade that necklace. I haven't upgraded the necklace because it's super low level. It says it's level 50. That's because of the gem I slotted in it. It's actually a level 31 necklace. But it's perfect for my build. So you come here to upgrade jewelry. Right click. And you see that first time up? Not that big a deal. And so we're going to go... We're going to get 0.6. And we're going to get 0.5. And so that, that that's a really cost effective upgrade. But the third one, eh, I don't know. This this thing is so old. I don't want to spend any more money on it. But so upgrade your gear, right? And just remember, here in mid game, everything you're doing is to prepare you for this. This is your goal, right? So work on that renown. Run those trees of whispers. Upgrade your gear. Pay real close attention to your aspects. Make sure they're not grayed out. And be really careful about. Um, your how you handle your loot. Uh, you can you can make some really nice gear from yellows. So pay close attention to a yellow that's a, a yellow that has three per perfect affixes. Like see, this was a yellow because it has three. This is better than a legendary with four that doesn't suit your build. Now this particular one suits my build, so it took it. But a lot of legendaries I get, I just break them down. You know, you can look here. This is a legendary that I that I that I used. Uh, whereas this is a yellow, and I even rerolled the basic attack speed on here. Okay, so that's it, guys. That's mid games tips and tricks. I hope uh, you found something useful. I hope it helped. Like, subscribe, and share. And I will talk to you next time. Enjoy Diablo 4. I will see ya.